everyone, I'm Lee and I have an innovative recipe for you today and they're called lasagna toppers. At work, one of my responsibilities is filling the hot box every morning and these lasagna toppers are always a hit with the customers. So guess what I did? I took one of these home and I dissected it and I think I know what to do. And I've been wanting to recreate these for a long time so what better day to make a video for the National Lasagna Day. And if you're watching this video, my little experiment paid off and they turned out delicious. To create the base of the sauce, I'll start with the traditional mirepoix, which is a combination of diced onion, celery and carrots. I've taken a large onion, which I've finely diced, along with one stick of celery and one small carrot. Generally, when I make a mirepoix, I like to work with twice the amount of onion as I do carrot and celery and it creates a lovely depth to the sauce. In a heavy based pan I warm up some olive oil just enough to cover the base. I add the diced onion, carrot and celery to the pan and I saute that over a medium low heat for a good few minutes until the onion has really softened. And once the mirepoix has beautifully softened, it's time to add another layer of flavour to the dish, which is garlic. Four cloves of finely chopped garlic go into the pan and I'll saute that just for about a minute or so until I can smell the lovely aroma. Then I add a half a kilo of beef mince and a half a kilo of pork mince. And I'm going to cook this on a medium low heat until there's no pink remaining. Years ago I lived next to an Italian grandmother and she told me the secret to a good bolognese is to cook each ingredient low and slow. So whilst the meat's been cooking, I've been stirring it around occasionally and breaking up any big lumps of meat. And now I add one tablespoon of tomato paste. I like to cook the tomato paste for a couple of minutes before I add any other ingredients because I find if I don't do that, sometimes tomato paste can have a bit of a raw flavour. And then I add a 400 gram tin of finely chopped tomatoes and then I fill the tin with water and add a tin of water as well. I find tinned tomatoes can be quite acidic so I add one teaspoonful of sugar for an extra depth of flavour, I sprinkle in two teaspoons of beef stock powder. And for even more flavour, I add some dried herbs. And today I'm using a teaspoon of dried thyme, a teaspoon of dried basil, and a teaspoon of dried oregano. And I cook this sauce for about 30 minutes now, and I stir it every now and then until a lot of the liquid's absorbed and it's luscious and it's all emulsified and delicious. So while the meat sauce is simmering away, I'm going to move on to the bechamel and it's super simple to make. This is how I do it. So the thing to remember when making the bechamel is it needs to have the same amount of butter as flour and the best way to do this is to weigh them. So today I'm using 100 grams of butter and 100 grams of flour and you'll need a whisk. So I light the stove and I place the butter into the pot. And once the butter is all melted and starting to foam, I add the flour. And I whisk this over a medium low heat for a good couple of minutes, whisking continuously. And then I add four cups of milk all at once and whisk it as I pour it in. And I whisk it continuously until it comes back to the boil and it's thickened. It's been about five minutes and I can feel that it's nearly back to the boil and the white sauce is starting to thicken up. Some people heat the milk up before they add it to the butter and flour but I don't find that steps necessary. As long as you whisk it continuously you'll end up with a lovely white sauce. Now I do this over a medium low heat. You don't want to make the white sauce too quick. It will be too hard to keep up all the whisking. 
and nearer the end it will get hard to whisk because <laughs> the mixture gets so thick and once it gets really lovely and thick it's ready and it's just come back to the very gentle simmer I can see some bubbles there so now all I do is turn it off the heat and I season it with some salt and some pepper I don't add cheese to my white sauce I prefer to add the cheese between the layers of the lasagna I find that adding cheese to a white sauce can cause it to get gritty and also traditional lasagnas don't have cheese in the white sauce <laughs> the meat sauce is finished smells amazing and all I do now is take the meat sauce off the heat and taste it for seasoning mm. so good it doesn't need any more sugar but it needs some black pepper and a touch more salt and it's beautiful and thick and all the liquid is almost reduced and this is what I want for this lasagna so today I'm using dried lasagna sheets and I have a little trick that makes them more pliable I put the dried sheets in a dish and then I pour over a little bit of boiling water enough to cover and I just leave them for a few minutes I take a big tray and I'm going to line it with baking paper so I'm just going to put a little bit of the meat sauce on the bottom and then I'm going to fit as much pasta sheets as I can by the way if you're doing this water trick it's best to have a tray in a single layer otherwise they can stick to each other a little bit I have a little gap on this side so I'm just going to get the lasagna sheets yep single layer with the hot water oh well but because they're pliable they're easy to cut now so I'll just get a sharp knife and cut one down the middle one more and I have a little gap here just to use them all up I've got one left okay so that's the base for my toppers now the next layer is the meat sauce and I'll spoon that all over the pasta sheets as evenly as I can so if you haven't got a huge tray like this you can just make a couple of trays right so we've got a layer of pasta a layer of meat sauce and that's all the meat sauce gone and now the white sauce which has gone really thick while it's been cooling down so I'll just put blobs of it as evenly as I can and it will spread once it's in the oven and I'll get a spatula and the very last thing I do is sprinkle it generously with some cheese today I'm just using a cheddar cheese you can use parmesan or mozzarella but this is tasty cheddar so it will give it another layer of deliciousness now I'll put this in the oven and I think about 30 minutes 30 minutes at 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit and it looks amazing so now I'm going to let that cool down and put it in the fridge and leave it overnight and tomorrow I'm going to make the toppers the lasagna has been in the fridge all night and it's really firmed up so now for the exciting part I'm going to trim it and cut it into pieces and turn it into lasagna toppers So I was debating whether to trim the edges or not but I think they'll be fine and I'm just thinking what size to cut them when you bread from them they will get bigger this is going to make a lot of toppers great for a party I think I can get three cuts that side yeah and 
and they're about the palm of my hand. So I'll make sure they're all cut through properly. 24 toppers here. I was concerned they might be too thick, but they're actually perfect. Right, I'll clean my mess, then I'll start braiding. So I have some flour, some breadcrumbs, and now I just need a few eggs. That'll do. Flour, egg, and breadcrumbs. Now you can use any breadcrumbs. You can use panko or fresh breadcrumbs or packaged dry breadcrumbs. I actually made these today. I just took a loaf of bread and put it in the Nutribullet and then I toasted it and then put it in the Nutribullet again. Only because I'm gluten free and I was out of gluten free breadcrumbs, but they're pretty easy to make. And you could totally make these smaller, cut them into smaller pieces. There's a lot of washing of hands going on here behind the scenes. <laughs> I was thinking, what am I going to run out of first, the egg or the breadcrumbs? Because I've got no more of neither. I'm out of eggs <laughs> and I'm out of breadcrumbs. And I think I'm going to run out of eggs first. And at this stage, you can freeze them like this. So I managed to have enough crumbs for 16. And the other ones I'll put in the container until I get more crumbs and more eggs. So I want to try cooking them in a fry pan and also in the oven for a slightly healthier option. I've got the oven preheated at 180 degrees Celsius, which is 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And because I'm only home at the moment, I'll just cook one topper in the oven. Maybe I'll cook two. So I'll drizzle over a little bit of olive oil and pop them in the oven and see how long they take. So they took about 20 minutes in the oven with a light sprinkling of olive oil. I've been warming up the pan for a couple of minutes. I find by warming up the pan before you add the oil, it's less likelihood of the, whatever you're frying sticking. So I'll just have enough oil to cover the base of the pan. I'll just keep a little eye on them. Oh yeah, that's what we're after. And I've just got the heat on a medium low heat. Oh, beautiful. Right, I think they're nearly ready. They look great. I'm so excited to try them. And why am I so excited to try one of these? Well, I've never tried one before. The ones that work are not gluten-free, but I made these gluten-free. And I'm just going to take one and have a bite. <sighs> oh, these are so delicious. I know why they're so popular. Now I'll try the oven one. Oh, hot. I think in the fry pan they're firmer. In the oven they've had too much time so maybe next time i'll put them in the oven for a shorter period of time but for a higher heat thank you so much for watching and really have a go at these they are delicious